So welcome guys to Raymond's Medical. So if you are new to this channel, make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss out whenever we post the new video. So we are going to look at how to write a nursing care plan for a client with tracheostomy. So during the final exam, you might encounter a question which is asking you to identify the five problems that the patient with tracheostomy will have. And how can you manage those problems using a nursing care plan? This is what we're going to look at today. So in the nursing care plan, you must understand that there are five columns which are involved. So in this first column, this is where you're going to write the problem. And we have two types of problems. We have the actual problem and the potential problem. The actual problem, this is the initial problem that the patient has. The potential problem, it is the likely cause that the uh, it's the likely problem that the patient might have. So this is where you insert your problem. The second column, this is where you're going to write the nursing diagnosis. Now, what is the nursing diagnosis or what information should be in the nursing diagnosis? In the nursing diagnosis, this is where you are going to explain how this problem is coming in about. And this is also where you're going to tell the examiner the indication or the evidence that has made you to see that the patient is having this problem. All this information should come out in the nursing diagnosis. The third column, this is where we are going to write our goal or the aim or the objective of this problem. What do we want to achieve now that we have identified that the patient has this problem? So when you are writing the goal, remember that the goal, it has to be SMART. S, it means that the goal has to be specific. M, it means it has to be measurable. A, it means it has to be accurate. R, it means it has to be realistic and time bound or time frame. It needs to have a time frame. Then the next column, this is where we're going to write our interventions and the rationale. The interventions, these, these are the things that we are going to do on this patient to assist the patient to overcome this problem that we have identified. And in the last column, this is where we write our evaluation. Okay, so the first problem that we have identified for a client with tracheostomy is ineffective airway clearance. So we move now to the nursing diagnosis. So in the nursing diagnosis, we just simply say ineffective airway clearance related immediately you start saying related to you begin explaining how this problem is coming in about related to accumulation of thick secretions in the trachea evidenced by dyspnea so it is because of these secretions that have accumulated in the trachea that has made you to see that the patient is having ineffective airway clearance. This dyspnea, it is the evidence. You have seen the patient having difficulties in breathing and this difficulties in breathing, the dyspnea, it is the one which has made you to see that this, that this patient is having eh, the problem that we have actually identified. Now, some students, they do make mistakes during the final exam. Others, they'll say related to, then they'll put slash due to. Please avoid writing like this. If you choose due to, just write due to. If you write related to, just say related to. And immediately you write that you begin explaining the reason why the problem is coming in about then you put 
the evidence because this is an actual problem. Okay, so we move now to explain the goal or the aim. Remember we said it has to be patient-centered. So always begin by saying Mary, or you can simply state the name of the patient. If you cannot write the name of the patient, you just say patient. So patient who have his airway cleared of secretions within 30 minutes of nursing intervention. It is realistic. Within 30 minutes, we are able to clear the secretions that are along the trachea of this patient. Okay. Then we move on to the interventions. So as you can see, we have so many interventions. So I've just written a few interventions, but there are so many that you can actually add on. So what are you going to do in order to remove the secretions? When you write the intervention, make sure you put the rationale, the reason why you are doing that intervention. Now, we are saying, I will, it's because you are writing it on a piece of paper. If you were working on the word, you could have said, I have, because you have already done it on the patient. Now, in this situation, you are writing it to the examiner who's going to mark your paper. So you say, I will sanction the secretion using a working sanction machine in order to prevent aspiration pneumonia. What you have actually done is that you have told the examiner that you are going to suction the secretions that are along the trachea using this machine in order to prevent the patient from having this type of pneumonia, which is an aspiration in pneumonia. You know, this is the type of pneumonia that comes about when the patient aspirates. What else are you going to do? You can simply say, I will position the patient in semiflowers to allow full lung expansion, thereby opening up the air. You know, when you allow full lung expansion, you simply open up the air of the client. Then the last one, you can simply say, I'll commence oxygen therapy, five liters per minute, if patient has saturations of less than 90% to increase oxygen tissue perfusion. This is what you can actually do. Let's move on to the evaluation. How do you write the evaluation? So in the goal, we simply say will be, but in this case, I've not written will be. You're going to see it on another problem. While in the evaluation, you say has been because you have seen it that this problem has been dealt with. So patient's airway has been cleared of secretions within 30 minutes of nursing intervention evidenced by patient breathing normally with a respiration of 19 breaths per minute. So if you look here, I've written in the goal, um, I've written within 30 minutes. I'm just highlighting it for you guys to see. Even this part, you also have to say within. Don't make mistakes you write after here, again, in the evaluation you write within. Please write the same stuff because you said within, so it has to show even in the evaluation that it is within. We move on to another problem. Another problem that the patient might have is impaired verbal communication. Now, why is the patient going to have this problem? This now takes us to the nursing diagnosis. So impaired verbal communication related to presence of a stoma evidenced by difficulties in maintaining the usual communication pattern. So you know that when there is the stoma along the trachea, the patient won't be able to communicate effectively because of this presence of a stoma that is along the trachea. 
So what will be our goal? Patient will be, now you have seen it just come. So patient will be, we write will be in the goal M. So patient will be assisted to learn other ways, other ways of communicating in order to get his or her needs met effectively with person within one week of nursing intervention. So what you have actually done is that you have told the examiner that you are going to assist the patient to learn other forms of communicating so that this patient will get their need met effectively. So what will be your interventions? The first one, I will provide a bell within reach to the patient to ring whenever he or she wants something to avoid frustration in the patient. You know, if you want to talk to someone and you are unable to communicate verbally effectively, you become frustrated. So we want to avoid this frustration in the client. So how do we avoid the frustration? We simply provide a bell to this patient so that whenever the patient wants to communicate to the nurse or any health worker, they will just simply ring the bell. If they ring the bell, that person will be alerted to simply say the patient needs something and to avoid the frustration. What else? I will encourage the use of gestures to communicate needs and desires if patient not able to write. So you simply encourage the patient to use the other form of, communicate, of communicating, which are gestures. And these gestures, they will simply make the patient to communicate their desires effectively. So there are so many interventions, guys, I'm sure you're able to see. We also have this one, which, which is a short one. I'll provide a pen and paper to allow patient write what he or she wants to say. Okay, so basically, if the patient is able to write, you give them a pen and a paper for them to write whatever they want to communicate to you. Let's move on to the evaluation. So here you just simply say, will be. I'm taking you back. In the goal or aim, you write will be. In the evaluation, you write has been. So sorry for simply saying have been, has. This is what you change and everything you copy it as it is. You only change this part. This part has to be changed and you put the evidence. The rest of the stuff, you copy them the way they are. So patient has been assisted in using other forms of communication to get needs met and to relate effectively, effectively sorry, with person, typing Ella, with uh, person and environment evidenced by no frustration. When the patient is not frustrated, it sim simply means that the patient is actually happy with other form of communication because frustration is an indication that someone is actually upset because they cannot effectively interact with the family member or the health worker. So there are many ways on how you can write the evaluation. This is an example of one. The other problem that the patient can have is altered nutrition status, less than body requirement. Okay, so how is this problem going to come in about? So altered nutrition, less than body requirement related to the presence of an artificial tracheostomy tube, which is compressing the esophagus, evidenced by dysphagia. So if you remember, I've said the moment you see this word related to it begins explaining why the patient is having the problem that we have identified. So it is because of the presence of this artificial uh, tracheostomy tube 
which is going to compress the esophagus, evidenced by dysphagia. For you as a nurse, you will see the patient presenting with the dysphagia. The patient will tell you to simply say, I'm having pain when swallowing, which is dysphagia. So this symptom or this sign that the patient will tell you, it is an indication that the patient is having all the nutrition status. Then the goal will be patient's nutrition status will be improved after one week of nursing intervention. After one week, that's when you're going to see the nutrition status of the patient improved. Because immediately after the operation of the subsequent day, the patient will actually then refuse to eat. What are the interventions? I will tell the patient to eat, to sit during meals, to prevent aspiration, and allow nice flow of peristaltic movement. If you know that the esophagus is just behind the trachea, so if there's an artificial tracheostomy tube, this is going to compress the esophagus. And as a result of that, there will be disturbance in the peristaltic movement. So you allow the patient to sit so that there is this nice flow of peristaltic movement. What else? I would tell the patient to eat small frequent meals that are rich in carbohydrates like porridge for energy or glucose. You know that the patient requires energy for them to do one or two activities. So if they don't have glucose, the patient will just simply lie in bed. What else? I would tell the patient to eat food rich in proteins like fish and eggs to replace or repair worn out tissues. So these are the basically the interventions that you can do. We move on to the evaluation. Patient nutrition status has been improved within one week of this intervention evidenced by patient eating well and no dysphagia. So this is how you write, has been, will be, I'm sure you have seen, will be here. It has moved or it has changed to, sorry, it has changed to, has been. Then everything has been coped the way it is. Then we have only inserted the evidence because we need to tell the examiner we are evaluating. We need to show the examiner that we have seen this. And because of this evidence that we have seen, it is the one which has indicated to us that the patient no longer has this problem. Okay. So another problem that we have so there are many, there are many interventions. I'm sure you are able to see. The other problem that you might have is not yet finished writing it is risk for uh, wound infection or risk for stoma infection. So this one is yet to be completed. Otherwise, these are some of the few nursing care plan problems that the patient with tracheostomy can have. Besides this problem, the patient can also have the potential problem. And one of the potential problems that the patient can have is a risk for wound infection or risk for stoma infection. The stoma can get infected. So you talk about how you are going to prevent that infection by cleaning it and changing the tube, all sort of, all sort of things. Then there can also be self-care deficit because this patient will be lying on bed or in bed. So thank you guys. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, make sure you subscribe and you share our channel. And if you want to join our online WhatsApp group, make sure that you inbox me. Then I'll give you the requirement for you to join our online group. Otherwise, thank you. 
this is an example of a nursing care plan for a client with tracheostomy.